Let me welcome the audience. This has been a very successful panel. For a lot of people who feel that they felt that the academy would, would be just honorific, uh, this is one of the derivatives of the academy. Uh, so with that being said, let me welcome my partner, uh, Dr. Sash Stevens, to say hello. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Brett, and I agree the panel uh, on the um, uh, activities of the Academy, the recent activities was very successful. And I want to start by just mentioning that the goals of the Academy are to select and recruit preeminent surgeon educators from across the globe uh, into the Academy and also to engage them in uh, pursuing far-reaching goals that will transform surgical education. We also aim to recruit uh, into the academy people who are, who are aspiring towards those high levels of excellence and get them to uh, reach those levels through good support. So thank you, Dr. Brett. Well, Dr. Ellison, you're one of those preeminent experts, um, uh, surgeon, surgeon educators. I wanna start with the first question for you. What do you want the members and the fellows to take home? Give me, give me three or four take home messages, Dr. Ellison. Thank you, Dr. Britt. Thank you, Dr. Sashtiva. So I, I think the take home messages are as follows. First of all, I think that few, if any, of our institutions were truly prepared for this crisis in surgical training in the wake of the pandemic. And I do think that common themes emerged uh, from many of the programs that included a severe impact on non-emergency operative trauma, hence less operative experience for the residents and to a lesser extent, emergency uh, case numbers. In addition, unrelated to ACGME stage, there was a variable degree of trainees achieving expected numbers of cases and progression to autonomy, although it was highly variable and was a program specific. Uh, fourth, the program directors really rapidly responded and pivoted with virtual co uh, conferences in many different venues. 97% of the program directors across all the surgical specialties adopted virtual conferences. And I would say that only a third addressed technical competency, which is a significant opportunity going forward. Finally, I, I think that the physical safety of our trainees was most severely impacted in really advanced stage hospitals. That is stage three, according to the ACGME classification. And I think that we have an opportunity to learn about that and also a better apply coping mechanisms. And one final comment, across the board, there is a need to put into place statements about education in institutional disaster plans. Those were the clear messages from this uh, survey. I'm gonna pose my question to Dr. Sadawi. Um, I'm gonna ask him, uh, what kinds of educational materials will be posted on the new educational resources webpage or portal? And how will it benefit the entire surgical education community? Thank you, Dr. Sachdeva and, and Dr. Britt. Uh, uh, actually, um, the current webpage, uh, you will see if you get on it, you'll see basically material related to how education is being changed because of COVID. But since this is going to be morphed into a website for the academy, educational website down the line, what uh, we, we believe that we're going to put on it is that uh, it's going to have um, tools such as curricula, uh, such as educational tool, and all these publications there on it will be peer reviewed. So actually that would be very beneficial as a secondary uh, uh, issue that people can get from it is that our surgical educators can uh, basically put their peer reviewed material that then they can list on their CV as peer reviewed publication, which would help actually quite a bit surgical educators to be uh, promoted in, um, academic, uh, in the academic world. Thank you. This is for Dr. Shabahan. Dr. Shabahan, the technology, how did the web page and the list of 
help us achieve our goals as far as uh, for the learner. Your comments. Thank you, Dr. Britt and Dr. Said Steve. Uh, it's been uh, it's been uh, really interesting to see how um, the presence of uh, the use of virtual technology has really. Um, revolutionize how, what we do in a very short period of time. Uh, clearly, uh, our subcommittee spent a lot of time on virtual interviews. Uh, to us, um, that's a challenge that was put in front of all of us as educators and the learners who are going to be interviewing in a very short period of time. And through the, um, uh, through the publication of the manuscript and through the, the virtual grand round, we've tried to be of assistance to our learners and um, and our, um, uh, our, our our program directors, I think there are some take homes that that, that we've uh, come to conclusion on, which is really that this may actually provide opportunities for both the, the applicants and the programs with a with a higher level of focus on what is the culture of the program and what is the culture that we're trying to convey virtually and what is the culture that the applicant's looking for. So I think that's really one of the main thing that, that has come out of this, aside from all the technicalities of how to conduct a virtual interview. Let me again thank the panel. This was an exciting discussion. Um, I want to now turn this over to Dr. Sash Steven for the final comments. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Britt. I'd like to thank the panelists. This has been a great discussion. And if anyone would like some information on the Academy, please contact any one of the panelists. You can contact Dr. Britt or myself. We'd be delighted to share more information with you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.